Hello everyone, welcome to episode 55 of Jen and Millie, where a Gen Xer and a millennial share the strength-based perspective through which they view the world. We are your hosts, Allison and Tess. I did that without my readers. Wow, I'm so proud of you. I have it way zoomed in, if you can't tell for future reference. <laughs> That's like 130%. I usually keep my font on my computer at 90 or even 80%. Yes. <laughs> so um, I had someone yesterday after we had a great strength day in, in Freeman, and I'll chat mm. a little bit about that. But um, how often it comes up that I am older, and sometimes I put it right out there, but you'll make statements like, oh, and by the way, the font is, at, or the screen is at 130%. <laughs> so we're, we're sure to cover um, the age difference. Generational difference, yes. for sure. Um, we did have a great day in Freeman. We did. It was wonderful. I um, Before we get into Freeman, I want to note our super awesome technology setup. So um, as you guys heard, sound quality wasn't the best on the last episode, and so we're always trying to tweak it to make sure it's easy and um nice to listen to. Um, so we have a, a little bit of a sound pad, um, affectionately called, which happens to be a beach towel my mom lent me that is like a hunter green with cats all over it. Really, the visual is hard to explain. It's it's a multitude of, of cat like kittens. Lots of cats. Yes. Yeah, and neither of us are cat people, but Allie is much less of a cat person, and it has now become a thing in the office. A thing. That I just... The cat thing in general, but now I keep this beach towel at the office so I can strategically place it. Near me? Near you, near Trisha. I love that Annette came in today while I was wearing it. (laughs) I mean, it's so large that Tess can wear it like a cape. I think what's Mm -hmm. kind of fun about this environment, and I'm trying to create a visual for you who are listening, is what we'll do to try to make this better. And it kind of reminds me, like any time that you're trying to get... A photo to this is going okay. Let's do a little bit of generational perspective. Uh-huh. This is old school. Yeah. So when you used to have to pose or position your camera to get a picture that you were in, so essentially if you didn't have a oh, tripod, yeah. Yeah. you would use didn't have a selfie stick, didn't have a whatever. right anything yep. possible to lift it to the right spot. Yep. And this sure. is what this reminds me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, man. Well, um, we did have an awesome day in Freeman yesterday. We did. Early day, late day for you. You stayed it was in a session. full day. But full day. When, um, so, so good. When you experience a full day and it doesn't feel like a f- super full a day, full day yeah. then you know that you're engaged and you know yeah. that you're in a great positive environment. We were literally surrounded by strengths reminders with the displays yeah. of strengths. I'll get a couple pictures to you. Sure. Um, and I know that you, you grabbed a couple pictures mm-hmm. yesterday, but just the general culture of we're engaged was mm-hmm. kind of off the charts. It was a staff in service day. Mm-hmm. And here are some fun things that they did. First of all, they had someone come in and talk about self care. Which I thought awesome. was, I mean, Jen was fantastic. Took lots of notes on, on her. Um, and it was the second she'd come earlier in the year, right yes. at the beginning of the school year, which I loved because so much our learning is one and done. Like we talk about a great topic, but then there's we we have to take on our own ownership for follow through. And I love that there is almost built in accountability yeah. because it was like remember that we talked about this right. in August and this, and not a lot of people remembered, which I don't know that I would have either. But it was really great that they had the same kind of person and the same topic, but it, it expanded a little bit at this really critical point of the school year for teachers. And it beautifully tied in our earlier presentation yeah. and then really what they were doing later throughout the, throughout the day. Yeah. So when staff in service is fun and staff in service is engaging, but it also provides mm-hmm. some information, I think you have more likelihood for people to take information Absolutely. and retain it. Yeah. So they played a game of knockout. It was great. It was yeah. just, and I know you participated in that. I, I did not participate. Watched, I watched it. Observed. Yeah. I didn't want to take home their staff trophy. So, you know, I thought I better excuse myself from competition. And I, I want to say that I really needed a day like that because um, if you listen to the last Jen and Millie, um, it's, it's time for us to... To maybe move on with some. <laughs> We've some talked about challenge, change, hard dark times. That's been the last like five episodes of this. <laughs> and if you listen to the last Jen and yeah. Millie, you heard me struggle. Yeah. And um, I, I really appreciate the grace and understanding that a lot of people extended. Yeah. And even to send um, messages of, Absolutely. Allison, I hear you. And um, mm-hmm. 
I care about you. Yeah. So I thought that it would be good for us to lighten it up a little bit today. And yesterday was a, bra- a great precursor yeah. to that because the day was full, yeah. but it felt full of light. Yeah. Um, just a level of engagement. Terry is incredible. Yeah. Um, she yep. is just so... She is intentional about creating yes. space for learning Yes, mm-hmm. for all of us. And, you know, we were lucky yeah. enough to have one of the mentors say, hey, I reached out to Terry about a better way for me to understand my context. And he forwarded that to me and I read it and I thought, oh, well, she's, she's a strengths yeah. expert. Yeah. And then just the intentionality um, that they have taken strengths to the next level as a school. Um, Tony has done a, a marvelous job, mm-hmm. and he did give you a shout out on Twitter. Um, oh gosh, it says, Twitter list us. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it says thanks to Allison Horn, um, Sean, and Twitter list us for a great day. Um, they have student ambassadors, yeah, high school students who are taking strengths, you know, back to their school environment yeah. in a really creative way. Oh, so, um, so I know that we we. Um, cast out some ideas about having people on the podcast oh, and they would be so great they would be fantastic mm-hmm. so if we wanted to future cast and think a little bit about yeah. how do you create a strengths culture I think they would be great yeah. to interview so oh, absolutely and Sean came in which is always fun for me as a mom because I don't get to see him very often but I really like I was amazed I'm just gonna you're gonna cry again I, this I, I might <laughs> This is in a good way, though. I was so amazed at his knowledge, Mm -hmm. but how different it is from me. Mm -hmm. Even the way he articulates information, his experiences, but then all the things that he's doing with strengths that he doesn't even tell me about. And as we were walking out, he said, Mom, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, look around. They've got strengths charts, and they have you know, reminders of this language everywhere. He said, that's really what the Clifton Builders... That's the intention of what we're doing. And you've got this happening at the high school level. He said, that's amazing. But then I said, Sean, why don't you tell me some of these great things that you're doing? And he said, because you would just, you would just talk about it. Yeah. (laughs) So it kind of led me to what I thought was interesting as the four um, workplace appreciation love languages. Yes. So it's an adaptation of the five love languages, which we've talked about a little bit before but it was an adaptation for the workplace because I loved the meme that said no physical touch, like no touching. <laughs> it reminded me of Strengths Day and our friend Jay, um, who said, "I here is my bubble. Yep. I do not, I do not like hugs." Yeah. Um, and he, a, a hug was snuck in. Um, but I do think it's important to ask people because we talk yeah. a lot about in relationship to strengths and also, um, you know, Q twelve measurements and engagement in the workplace. How do you want to be recognized? Mm -hmm. And I think the four appreciation, the workplace love languages would be a great starting point. Mm -hmm. Um, So I asked for that um, slide from Jamie. Mm -hmm. Um, So hopefully she'll share it with us and I can put it on the worth mentioning board. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it'd be good to ask someone in what Mm -hmm. way would you like to be praised? So back to Sean, he was Mm -hmm. like, that's not what I, that's not what I want from you. He said, I just want to get it done and then I'll tell you about it when I, when I want to. Yeah. So I love that. So if you're not familiar with the five love languages, if you're listening, um, uh, five love languages are ways to express, to show, and also to receive care. Um, and so there was an adaptation of the five appreciation languages of the workplace. So it was everything except for physical touch. So that would be acts of service. Or I think they said like random acts of kindness or acts of serving one another, uh, words of affirmation. Uh, quality time and the fourth is gifts gift yeah gift giving so they talked about with each of those like an act you know quality time you know obviously might be grabbing lunch together or spending your free period together Um, uh, acts of service might be taking 10 minutes of a class time when someone needs to leave early gift giving might be bringing someone coffee or soda Um, and words of affirmation, just talking about mm-hmm. their strengths or building them up. And so um, it was a really neat, I think, adaptation of that because it helps us even, they related it back. We were sitting there and had gone earlier in the day, did a session with them um, um, just around teammates and strengths. And they talked about how strengths impacts that. And I know we've talked about that because you are definitely a words of affirmation person, which yes. makes sense based on communication, um, woo, your high, high positivity, input. high input. I'm very much a quality time person. 
um, which is a lot to do with higher relator um, in election context, individualization, wanting to spend quality time with people, especially one-on-one or in small groups, um, and how much our strengths, right, our behavior is all-encompassing of who we are it because it impacts our values and our life experiences and vice versa those things impact our strengths um, and our love languages are just another element of that another manifestation of it so you know I even think about my dad who I gave my parents the love languages book last year for Christmas and they both read it and took it and figured out what their love languages were and my dad his love language which I could have told you beforehand is acts of service well his number one is activator so he's all about just going and going and going and uh-huh. doing and doing and doing uh-huh. so he will unload the dishwasher and he will make sure he runs the errands and he will grab the groceries and he does I mean make sure dinner is prepared when my mom comes home like he does things to show love and it's so intuitive you know based on when you just think about his strength set um, and that ties really well with um, the quote we use often the question we use mm-hmm. often um, the pondering from Jolene for every yeah, job there's someone who loves, loves to, do, to it. do it and he loves that because right. it's how he gets to express love but it's also funny even growing up like my mom didn't necessarily see that or receive it like it was once we put language to that's how he's showing love is by getting things done um, but it's because her love language isn't the same right and I love that because even a tool like strengths and like love language helps us to open dialogue about that to say okay my natural tendency the best way that I receive love is through quality time but someone else in my life might not have that as a top love language so they might not intuitively think about that they might think oh I'll give them a gift right to me spending time with me is a much greater gift than a physical gift so I want to strength spot I mean, off the chart strength spot, your individualization, which we don't talk about a lot. Yeah. And you're really good at Mm -hmm. noticing my connectedness. And I don't know if, if you're like me, you have a light that comes on. And then once that light comes on, everything's illuminated like forever, forever, (laughs) forever. So when you strength spot my connectedness, it has helped to shine light on my connectedness. Mm -hmm. We don't talk about your individualization very often. But when I was thinking about and listening back to the previous episode, when you were talking about the plans that you had for Alex, Mm -hmm. I was thinking about it. And then as I, I kind of saw a few things on social media and then just to see you light up talking about it and what you had done on Monday morning, very early on Monday morning, (laughs) um, to really honor her turning 30, the thoughtfulness that you you had asked her, and I also am friends with Alex on social media, so I got to see this firsthand as well. When she said, I just want this thing, it was more than just one thing. Yeah. Um, You you sought it out. Oh, absolutely. She made made it happen. She made some passing comment about gold balloons like two weeks ago. So I was like, I have to get her gold balloons. (laughs) Like it is such an individualization thing. But it brings me so much joy. It does. To be able to just like show her love and worth and like to really build not only friendships, but like that's a momentous thing in her life. And what role do we have as friends and as people in each other's life to be able to honor those moments? Okay. So going back to when I, you know, was tearfully talking last episode, when you simply put my strengths card out in front and lined up all my papers, that's individualization because you know what I need. Yeah. Even if I can't articulate it. And then when you're talking about gifting your parents, the level of language is yeah. like, <laughs> <that's it. laughs> That is so, just a lot of individualization in me. <laughs> one of the things that I kind of thought that would be good for us to note today is that this mm-hmm. is a forever practice. Oh, yeah. So you and I talk about strength spotting all the time, but I yeah. tend to get stuck in the narrative of your context mm-hmm. and your adaptability. Those yeah. are the two that come to my mind. Like, Which are Whoa. one and two, right, for right. me. But also, like, individualization is in my top five. Yeah, I know. And so, it, but and I'm like, and I don't feel like I spot it a whole lot either because it's so ingrained in how I relate to people. And to me now, it's like a giant golden <laughs> um, balloon light that has lit up. That I thought, oh my goodness, yeah. I'm now seeing this all the time. Yeah, all the I saw it all day yesterday. Okay, so I I think one of the coolest things actually that helped me 
like my individualization click was strength spotting Sean's individualization. And he and I share individualization context as a blend. We both have that in our top five, which is a really, really cool blend, I think, because it's about the uniqueness of people and a love of history. So it merges and blends together to say, I want to understand people's unique histories, the perspectives that they bring as a unique individual because of what they've gone through in life. And I strength spotted his individualization in the way that he was talking about he's running for an office i hope he's okay he won't listen to the podcast i hope he's okay that's talking about this but he doesn't listen to any of them he's running for an (laughs) officer an office position in his fraternity um and he's up against another person and he's like oh yeah i know i'm gonna win but i have three possible concession speeches in case i don't win and they're all based on who will be in the room And it was like, well, that's obviously, I mean, so many of his other strengths, but the fact that his options were based on the audience is an individualization thing. It's customizing the message, customizing your approach to anything based on who is going to be there. Well, I love how individualization blends with his competition, which I hadn't Mm -hmm. thought about too Mm -hmm. much until I was listening to him yesterday, thinking about... There's so much about his competing that is in, that is within. Yeah. And when he's thinking about the opponent, he is thinking about them in a very special, I mean, unique way. Yeah. Like he's seeing the person for the whole person. Mm-hmm. And I liked, I mean, I am his mom, so mm-hmm. I love tenderhearted moments. Mm-hmm. But I, I love that his competition wasn't saying, and I will defeat them. Yeah. I mean, I think he recognizes the gifts and talents that other people bring which is why I think strengths has come to mean so much more to him yeah. now. That individualization, it, it, it's what strengths is all about, the uniqueness yeah. of every person. Yeah. Yep. And so I was thinking about um, today on my drive here is context individualization. That's funny that you brought up Sean and, and the both of you because I was thinking yeah. about the both of you have this. Is that your ability to hear a tiny little thing about the 30th birthday balloons? And you can retain it? Um, I think... I because your spatial you need... recognition, you set... So I still have this visual in my head. The way that you set up the space for me before you left Fremont. Yeah. <laughs> it's you know, a, you sent me like a picture right now. I was like, yeah, I just want to make sure you knew where everything was. <laughs> that you, you set it up in this spatial recognition of how I would see find it. Yeah. Yep. And yesterday, I don't know if you remember doing this, you said, I put the uh, tote on top of... Because I knew you'd forget about it because it was sitting behind a bookshelf. So I wanted to make sure it was visually present for you so you would remember to take the tote with you when you left. Because you know <laughs> how I see things. So I think that that example, a spatial recognition like that, and maybe a little bit of Fremont, is context individualization blend. The example of the balloon, I think balloon I think is pure individualization. Okay. Because people with individualization, you know, Michael Libra and Gallup talks about her two grandmas. One with individualization and one with consistency, which are least likely pairs. Yes. Her grandma with consistency gives every grandkid a crisp $5 bill every year to every kid every Christmas because that's how she best loves them, by treating them all very fairly. equally, mm-hmm. fairly. Um, the other grandma on December 26th starts picking out the perfect gift for the following Christmas for every grandkid based on who they are. Right. And so I think there's something about individualization that is always looking and making mental notes of small things that people say. So I do this throughout the whole year. I will make little mental notes about something that someone has said. And like the fact that I know multiple times Alex has talked about how she keeps words from people and notes from people and how the best gifts she's ever gotten are words of affirmation and notes from people. And so I was like, okay, obviously that's what I want to do for her 30th birthday is collect all of these notes. And so I think something like knowing you and knowing I need to put the box on top, that's my context of knowing that you have forgotten things and easily forget things in community. So I want to make sure you don't forget (laughs) things. Um, But something like making notes about a good, great gift or a great way to honor someone, I think can be and often is pure individualization because, you know, we talk a lot, Gallup talks a lot about how people with high individualization are really good gift givers because you pick up on the unique things of people. But I also think it's the ability to pick up 
and make mental notes of things that people have commented on. And so my mom does not have high individualization, but she has high relator. Um, and I think her relator functions in this way to us that are closest to her. So she has a hard time picking out gifts for other people, and mm-hmm. she might be fine with picking out whatever. But she, at one point, we were FaceTiming. We FaceTime every Sunday, and this was last year's kind of Christmas setup. FaceTime every Sunday, and at some point I was meal prepping and cutting, and I tend to cut myself a lot with knives when I chop because oftentimes I'm multitasking, like I'm listening to an audiobook or I'm FaceTiming or Marco Poloing someone. And so I'm doing multiple things, so I just like nick myself. Well, that was, I think it happened when I was FaceTiming my parents, and so I had to run my you know, finger under the water and, um, run myself to urgent care at ER. (laughs) No, I have not had to do that yet. But so Christmas, I opened my gift from my parents or from my parents. And it's like a knife, like just one knife. And that's what I got from them. And it's so bizarre because they like to spend quite a bit on us as kids. And so, you know, my parents or my siblings are opening these like crazy gifts. And I figure out this is like a $200 $200 knife. I'm like, what is, what is this? I know they don't listen. It's this really fancy knife. And my mom said, well, I know you've cut yourself quite a few times. And I think it's because you don't have very good knives. And I was just like, oh my goodness. And it's been the best knife since the knife. And I have oh. nicked myself once. And it's It'll the take sharpest your finger thing. Right off. I was yeah. like, I was, I, I like almost <laughs> cried when I got it because I was really nervous. I was going to cut all my fingers off, but I literally haven't because she knows, and that's her relator, right? Because she is in relationship with me. She's intentional about our conversations. Um, but if she had high individualization, that would bleed to everyone, right? It would think about the unique needs and the uniqueness of each person that she encounters. Versus the relationship that she has. And I, I will say this. There's nothing better than a really good knife. There are a lot of things in life that the high quality Matters. is just life changing. And I didn't, I didn't know, right? I had no idea. But I like all my scars have like healed in this last year of like not ever cutting myself when I cook. I was thinking oh, about man. that today when um, I have a little tiny um, travel size um container of a really good hand lotion that Gigi gave me years ago, years ago. And it's a teeny tiny one, but it's such high quality. And I was using the last of it thinking, Oh, this has been, this has been a tiny little gift that someone gave me years ago Mm -hmm. that has lasted me all of this time. And each and every time I put the lotion on my hands, I think this is such high quality. Yeah. There are little things like that, Mm -hmm. that I think the thoughtfulness is amazing when we're extended a gift like that. I think that's a good question Mm -hmm. to our listeners. How do you gift in relationship to your strengths? And I think we've asked that question before, but you know, maybe even with love languages tied in. Yeah. So your parents are also gifting with their, their languages. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so do you. Mm -hmm. So I just think what you did for Alex over the course of the entire weekend Mm -hmm. was beautiful. It was so fun, though, and that's the thing is because I was functioning in my strengths. Right? I would not, I would not um, name this if I didn't believe and know that you received as much joy, if not more, oh, 100%. in doing this. If you had done this and it was like, yeah, I had to do this, and then I had to do this and this, and it was painful for you or it didn't feel like joy to you, I yeah. wouldn't be naming it on here. No, it was so much fun, and, and then y- to see you were the excited, reaction. yeah. And yep. you were, so you were future casting about it. Yeah. And then in the moment you were full of joy. I mean, yep. if you follow Tess on social media, you could see that. And yep. then even to hear you talk about it later after, yeah. that's what we call those kinds of moments of flow yeah. and bliss and true joy. Yeah. And so the entire experience was yeah. full of joy for you. So the future casting yeah. in the moment being present and the memories that you have after. Absolutely. So how do we craft more moments mm-hmm. like that? a good question because I think we need to yeah. especially based on the last episode <laughs> I yeah. think we need to Great. so well, a couple of fun things joy. that came out of the last episode yeah I forgot how funny Flo's character <laughs> someone who commented I think one of our, our listeners said oh the memories I loved this show or I miss um, someone yeah. said something about you know mm-hmm. I mean kiss my grits was really a phrase I mean you you just can't really make that up so 
just the time travel that we get to experience sometimes when we're on um, and we're talking about the things that are Jen and Millie-esque mm-hmm. about the different generational perspectives. Yesterday I mentioned culottes to you. I have no idea what that oh, is. Oh, culottes are like corduroy skorts. <laughs> And then we talked about, which I won't even get into, but people could probably guess, but we talked about what flip-flops used to be called and how that has made a a generational change, thankfully, in language. Um, So some of these things that Mm -hmm. when when we cast out dialogue about it, even talking about flow and kiss my grits, it can create moments of joy for people. Yeah. Because they're having a a reminisce. Absolutely. About something that um, was maybe a great moment. Yeah. in that certain present at that time. Mm-hmm. But when we have memories that we can reflect back on and yeah. they bring us humor or they bring us joy, my culottes brought me a lot of joy. <laughs> they were maroon. All I think of is Kool-Aid when you say that. It's culottes. I, I, kn- I know, but... S- just I try saying it. Say culottes. Culottes. Yeah. Culottes. Will you say it really nice? Culottes. culottes. Um, <laughs> so I'd love to hear from listeners, what's a phrase from your generation mm-hmm. that you couldn't use today? That would make any sense to um, a different generation. So if when I said if I would said kiss my grits, I would have had thought you had a brain aneurysm. <laughs> okay. So what's a phrase that you could use? Think. Well, you use Bitmoji. You guys made yeah, you know. but so I didn't have a Bitmoji either. Like you, but you knew what it meant. This. I knew what it meant, but I didn't, I didn't have even know one. What it meant. Um, I'm trying to think of like things that were super. Popular when I was in junior high, high school, like Did Jersey Shore and oh, goodness. like Flava Flav and things like that. Your MySpace song. <laughs> oh my, oh, okay. Which this is def- definitely okay because, but they're coming a little bit back into style. So on my MySpace page, when you had a MySpace page, you could customize the song that played when someone else went to your page. Like it was like, did you did you ever have MySpace? Uh, no. No. Okay. Well, I never okay. even saw Word. MySpace. Okay. Like. So MySpace, it was kind of like the a merge between blog and Facebook. So it was a little bit of personal stuff, but you also it was like a blog. You didn't really inter you interacted a little bit with people, but it was more messaging, and um, but it was a little bit like a blog. You okay. know, a little bit about yourself and so but you could you could customize like the theme of it and I remember mine was like this dark maroon like super I don't want to say it um it was a little like emo s. I was like, just going to was say like, was just an emo not, girl I didn't, wasn't really no but I, very like deep like I really wanted it to you know you know dark display all the yeah all the emotions of my angsty junior high life and um, but when you went to my page, one of the things you can do on MySpace is customize the song that played because nobody like muted what was happening on computers, right? So when you went to a MySpace page, a song would start playing. So, so kind of like when you open a greeting card and it has the recording of a song. Yes, but in a tech, in a tech space, right? So okay. you landed on the web browser page, like you clicked on my MySpace profile and you got to my MySpace homepage and... XOXO by Fall Out Boy started playing. <laughs> I don't know that I know that song, but I know who Fall Out Boy is. Fall Out Boy. So I'm trying to remember the name of the album. Let's see if I can find it here. But I had, it was um, their, ooh, Fall Out Boy was like my favorite band forever, which is just hilarious. That's pretty emo too um, for that time, isn't it? No, they were pretty popular. Um, but like Sugar, we're going down swinging. Um, from under the cork tree, this is 2005. Um, this was my favorite album. I'm Can you to still go of... to your MySpace page? Oh, that's a really good thought. I have no idea. <laughs> I don't think so. I want to know. <laughs> Let's see if we can. You I can't. Don't, I have MySpace no idea. doesn't still exist, right? Or does it? Once you put something out into the universe. Oh, I know that. <laughs> the website. That's actually my entire spiritual <laughs> oh practice. Gosh, Once you put yeah. something out into the universe. universe. Okay, so XOXO was the song that you got to from From Under the Cork Tree, the album. But I also, A Little Less Sixteen Candle, A Little More Touch Me was one of my favorite songs. <laughs> this is so bad. Well, because Dance Dance was super popular. And it was like their more upbeat song. Okay. But there were so many. Like, Nobody Puts Baby in the Corner. Like, there. oh gosh, there were so I many really good this. 
so many really good songs off of this. Or songs that I loved. I wouldn't say they're really good. I should go back and listen before I like stake my musical reputation on Fall Out Boy. But my my taste has refined a whole lot since middle school. But I follow you on Spotify. I don't see Fall Out Boy come yeah, up very no, often. I don't, but I don't, I'll be looking for it now. I don't think I have um, played this album probably since then. Just so since when, you, when you experience, when you think about that song, do you immediately think about your MySpace page? Because no, I think there's so much I, tied to music and, and memory. I So I think about, um, oh, yeah, you can log in on MySpace. Okay. Okay. Ooh, this will be, okay, we can't do this on the podcast, but I'm going to see if I can get into my MySpace page. And This is fantastic. Oh, gosh, this is scary. Um, so can I ask you, um, just in the spirit of vulnerability, yeah. um, I think you probably were just glad that I finally cried on the podcast. Oh, I was so glad. It was like a release. I was very glad you finally spoke it out because I feel like for, um, golly gee, we segue into new topics really quickly. I was going to talk about my music I want you to. I want you to. Um, We, uh, because we've been talking about how we've been going through hard times and specifically you have been going through a hard time and how your strengths have impacted that and what kind of practices you are working on to help that. I think we've had a lot of people reach out concerned about you and just want to know what's happening. And so the fact that you said divorce, that was the first time you named that word on the podcast. Mm -hmm. I think that was powerful because words matter. And the fact that you no longer, right? Like, and I think, and I don't know if we talked about it on the podcast or if we talked about it after, because our conversations blend so readily between the podcast and between um, and between our lives. But I think that because vulnerability and Brene Brown are so popular that there's a lot of, and I don't think this is what was happening, but there's a lot of false vulnerability. I'm yes. saying I'm going through a hard time, but not actually willing to speak out what exactly that is. Yes. And so I thought that what we did on the last episode was the most brave I've ever seen you. And I loved witnessing that. Like, it was so beautiful to sit here and to watch you, I mean, blubber and nearly, you know, I was like, oh my gosh, one word and it's going to be, we're going to have to pause. But I thought that was, that was the, the thin space, right? Between like real life and Mm -hmm. these conversations. And that's why we thought these conversations were important. And we need to talk about flow and to talk about the cat towel that we have on the table right now and but we also need to be able to model that what vulnerable conversations look like because I think even in in our culture because vulnerability is such a common like buzzword and we talk about the need to be vulnerable I mean I even think about some of the staff activities we do which are are great but we never to me I have such a radar for like BS vulnerability mm-hmm. of like oh I'm going through a hard time and which may be very accurate but unless you're really willing to sit in it and I do this all the time you're actually creating walls rather than than open doors to have conversations about the vulnerable vulnerable spaces and I do this too like emotional detachment from the hard things that are going on mm-hmm. and that does not lend itself to success right Right. it does not lend itself to healing when you have to and and sometimes we need to emotionally distance ourselves from the hard things that we're going through but it doesn't lend itself to true growth and healing and development as a result of it it's when we actually name what's going on and we connect our whole self our actions our feelings our behavior all back to what's happening that i think we start to take steps in the growth mindset process, right? It's not a one day I will, or I haven't done this yet. It's like that step one is acknowledging, is naming what's happening, is acknowledging it and being willing and comfortable to sit in the vulnerability. And I think you modeled that so well. Well, part of that is because this is a safe space. Mm -hmm. This is a safe container. I forget that this is going out (laughs) publicly people. <laughs> yeah. so you and I have a safe container and I it's it's like the microphone's not even here yeah and so you gave me the grace and the the trust is built between the two of us that I could say it and name it and I knew I was going to be encouraged to do so and I knew mm-hmm. I was supported in that statement yeah. so that piece of it has been very freeing for me mm-hmm. because even saying divorce feels like I'm saying failure 
Hmm. And that's very hard for me, as you know. Um, but also just to be open to say, you know, here's what's going on behind the scenes. Yeah. Is it, it was important for me to say. Yeah. So in that spirit, and the reason I brought that up is I think that you were pleased that I, I was like, yep, this is where things are at. Finally, I can just say it. Yep. I would encourage you, if you have access to your MySpace, <laughs> I hope that our next Instagram <laughs> picture, we'll a picture my MySpace is a picture page. of your... Of I'm going to really try and find it. I'm so curious. Emo Tess. And I would love to see and hear from you what was the MySpace experience as a, as a junior high, oh, trying to remember. junior high to high school? Mm -hmm. Is that when you... I think junior high, it was early on in high school, I stopped and switched to Facebook. So I would like for us to talk a little bit about yeah. that and for you kind to remember, yeah. own that version of Tess. Yeah. I think there are many versions of Tess. Yeah. But the Tess, just like back to, you know, strength spotting your individualization. Yeah. Like sometimes when you share about emo Tess, like this. I would say angsty Tess. I was never... Okay fully emo and and the only reason I like want to clarify that is because there were a lot of people that's a very prevalent subculture in society and so I don't necessarily want to associate myself actually out of respect for them because that is a very like okay uh, let me rephrase it <laughs> junior high test angsty middle school test middle school <laughs> test I think is probably very different than the test that we see today mm -hmm. but the test that I know and so back to your con I hear your context and your adaptability when I think of you yeah when I think of you I think of old soul yeah so I like anything that illuminates the various layers of tests sure middle school junior high high school tests <laughs> yep now tests, you know, mm -hmm. just all of those ways that we can, and we do this a lot here on yeah. the podcast, even though I don't have high context, I love to ponder what would five-year-old mm -hmm. self think of this. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I love it's to your connectedness. I love to, I love <laughs> to ponder, you know, seventh grade self, mm -hmm. where would she fit today? Yeah. What oh would she gosh. do differently? So mm. let's, let's take a deeper dive into that. If you wouldn't mind. Yeah, that's totally um, fine. And I'm that's excited. kind of a way for us to model a little bit of vulnerability as well. I love it. I love it. That'll be fun. Um, yes, I remember when I think about Fall Out Boy and think about that song, I don't think about my MySpace page. I think about sitting in my closet with my Nokia phone, T9. My I was the first person in my class to get a cell phone when I was in sixth grade, um, and it had a bright orange cover. And I remember calling into my local radio station to request that song to be played. Did you have a dedication with it? No, I didn't. I wanted it anonymously. Gosh, I But I just wanted it played all the time. <laughs> so I remember request, calling I have a request. picture of this in my mind. <laughs> Were there like thin Girl Scout Thin Mints next to you or something like that? I just picture, play the song. <laughs> play the song while I eat my Thin Mints. Play it. Um, oh my gosh. I don't think I was still a Girl Scouts at that point, but they were probably Thin Mints in the house. Why did you get a cell phone first? Out of everyone in my class? I, because I think my parents got it for me because I had so many activities and they like, I was involved in everything, every sport. And so the main reason that I got it was to text them when the bus got back into town for whatever game that I was at. They didn't think that you'd be calling the radio station. No, they didn't, which is why I was in my closet calling the radio station. Do you think they know now? <laughs> I'm sure they I do. I hope they like listen and wasn't. hear this. They There's so many don't. references to your mom and dad on this podcast this I time. It. I love it. I also, I am like, I've been feeling homesick lately and I'm excited to be mm -hmm. able to go home for Thanksgiving. I haven't seen them since May, which is a long time. I love the, the snap that I saw of the joy <laughs> because I see... The Instagram. I'm not on Snap. I'm oh, sorry. Snap. Instagram. Snapchat less tests as well. <laughs> Twitter less tests and Snapchat less tests. Um, the the visual that I had of your mom and dad in a moment of joy, I see you in both of them. Yeah, for sure. I'm a really hilarious. good blend of both of them. So although none of us kids share any strengths with my parents, which is fun. It is fun. So, it's, it's unique, I think. So It is. Oh, anyway, oh, good episode. A little bit of a recap. We loved our time at Freeman. It was so wonderful. Um, we'd love for you, kind of in the spirit of that, and this weekend to think about maybe a way that you give gifts. And 
what is your dominant love language and how do your strengths and your love language correlate to the way that you most naturally give gifts to other people. So share with us. I think what we've asked before is the favorite gift you've received. Yeah. Um, so maybe the favorite gift, favorite you've given. gift you've given and how your strengths and love languages play into that. And then you had another question. Remind me. Um, well, I think I wanted to kind of just, what did I say? You oh, said you'd love to yes. ask our listeners about something. I don't know. I'll have to listen back. You're good at remembering that. Well, there was a question embedded somewhere. And so we'll... Yeah, I hope you can find it. I hope you can find it and (laughs) respond to it. Um, Yes. I did want to um, go back to Freeman a bit. And I love the... This is probably when you think about those four appreciation languages. It was quality time. It was acts of service. But I loved being part of their Thanksgiving meal. It was delightful. So the superintendent planned a beautiful Thanksgiving um, meal, which mm-hmm. he served with his family. With his family. To the school staff during the in-service. Like his full family, like his wife, yes. his kids, and his parents. And it was beautifully, I mean, a beautiful, long, extended table. Spread. One big table. Yeah. Which, I mean, some All of those staff, things, yeah. little tiny pieces that made it meaningful. Not the, individual round tables, but a whole family style yes. table. All the staff. The folded oh. um, napkins and oh, the right. cranberries on the table. And oh. the meal is wonderful. Yeah. Um, so I, I want to extend gratitude that we were included in that. Yeah. But then to see something like that modeled. It was Andrew Havel, guys, their superintendent. Yes. And he's just doing an incredible job. Yeah, yeah, it was wonderful to see that and just to see all the school staff and the way that they supported one another and kind of think outside the box. What does an in-service look like? Um, when you gather people that work mm-hmm. together, how could it be fun? Yeah. That was a question we pondered yesterday. Yeah. Um, this this is always our our conversations are always fun to me. Mm-hmm. I know the last podcast probably didn't sound like fun. It was so fun. It was right. It was so fun. It was right yeah. at the time, and it was yeah. right at the moment. Yeah. Um, but having a cat towel in here <laughs> makes things fun. Just even knowing that someone owns a cat beach towel um, makes my life a little bit more fun. So I'm glad. Mm, well, anyway, thanks, everybody, for tuning in to this episode number 55 of Jen and Millie. If you enjoyed, enjoyed today's conversation, consider sharing this episode with a friend. To interact with us and share the responses to the questions we posed, which are layered throughout because I can only remember the one that we talked about um, at the moment, but follow us on Instagram. I'll probably also post a picture of the cat towel and some of our pictures from Freeman, our day at Freeman, but feel free to follow us on Instagram at Jen and Millie. That's at G-E-N-N-A-N-D-M-I-L-L-I-E. And the views of this podcast are exclusively Allison Horn and Tess Starman and do not reflect the views of the Teammates Mentoring Organization. Until next time.